What's going on YouTube? I am B. Dobbins, FTW, and following the colossal backlash to loot crates in EA Star Wars Battlefront 2, government officials in both Belgium and the state of Hawaii have begun looking at potential legislation to regulate paid RNG loot crates. Today, I want to talk about why I support these efforts and why heightened scrutiny of loot crate practices by legislators and consumer advocacy groups is seriously warranted, because I just can't escape this feeling that EA is deliberately using the psychology of addiction to exploit children. Now anytime I bring up the potential illegality of paid RNG, a common retort all here is that this is essentially no different than Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. And nobody ever raised a stink about those. But you know what? Maybe we should have. I remember as a young child my burning desire for the Masked Beast, a powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card that reminded me of myself. I remember harassing my mom every time we went to the store, any store, let me get this pack. It was a particular type of pack, different packs had different kinds of cards, and there was only one super rare card I wanted in this pack. And this went on for months, a year even, my mom dropping an extra three bucks on every errand. Finally I got it, and what a rush that was. But looking back on it, I can't help but feel that Lil Dobbs got played. Because the reality is I must have spent at least $150 for one card. Because the rest of the cards were useless to me. You can only have a certain amount of cards in your deck, and mine was already completed. I was just trying to buff it with the most powerful cards in the game. Besides, after the third time you've bought a particular type of pack, all you're getting is duplicates that you already have dozens of. Huh, what does that remind you of? But, there's just that one last card you don't have that has like a 0.0001% drop rate in the fucking pack. So every pack I got without the Masked Beast, I might as well have just thrown out. And I repeated this process again and again with each new powerful card I decided I wanted, and it meant buying a different kind of pack each time. Would my mom have been okay with it if she had understood what was really going on? That every time we bought those packs, it was like dumping money in a slot machine, and 9 times out of 10, nothing of any value to me came out? To the tune of hundreds of dollars over the years? I don't think she would have. If I had a kid, I don't think I'd be cool with that shit today. I mean, what a waste of money, right? We get on Craigslist and go find the mass beast for 10 bucks from a private seller. I don't think most parents today would be okay with how their hard-earned money is being spent if they understood what's really going on with paid RNG. But that's one of the benefits of selling things to kids. They're young, gullible, trusting. Their faith in humanity has yet to be solely by the cold realities of corporate greed. They don't yet appreciate the value of money, the hard work behind it, so they make for good, pliant customers. And businesses know that just as my generation would wear our poor mothers down through attrition for Pokemon cards, so too will this generation molest their own for loot crates. And the parents will cave as they do because it's always a small price to pay to get your kid to shout out. So here, dear, you can use my credit card, but bring mommy a Valium first. It's a scam, man, and this scam existed long before microtransactions and video games. It's that stupid fucking claw machine. It's those creepy keymaster machines. It's whatever gimmicky crap you see lined up on the wall at your local round table. That kids get drawn into hoping for iPods and Marvel dolls. Every machine that takes your money and gives you nothing back and you're too young to know a scam when you see one. And the parents don't care. It's a small price. The game looks harmless enough. They'll gladly pay it if it means the kid's fucking off long enough for a good screw. We've been conditioned for this over the course of generations because scamming kids has always been easy profit. It's like taking candy from a baby or in this case five bucks from a ten year old that people would bring up their own childhood exploitation to defend exploiting children today is only another symptom of our total indoctrination to our corporate overlords. Finally, gamers are starting to ask, is it right to scam kids? You know, what's different this time around is it's not just little kids trying to play that stupid claw machine. There are plenty of adults playing Battlefront who recognize that they wouldn't have been able to properly enjoy this game without letting themselves get price gouged for important unlocks like Darth Vader. Assuming, of course, they don't have the time to unlock him through the estimated 400 hours of gameplay otherwise required. Because adults are smart enough to know a scam when they see one. But our kids? Do the kids realize that the only reason they put everything in RNG boxes now is that it lets them get an extra $10 out of you for a Darth Vader unlock that by any fair standard should have been reasonably attainable in the $60 game you originally bought? The most common argument you'll hear against regulating RNG loot crates is that nobody forces you to buy them. People can make responsible choices, and that's absolutely true for adults. This was the same argument Big Tobacco relied on to defend cigarette advertising, but they eventually lost. Why? Because the kids. Courts and legislators bought the argument that, hey, everyone knows cigarettes are bad for you, so it's up to responsible consumer choice. Okay, if you smoke cigarettes and die horribly, it's your own fault. But eventually, they determined that children shouldn't be held to that same standard. That we can't expect kids to be as responsible or as informed as adults. Studies back then showed that kids as young as 3 to 6 were as familiar with Joe Camel as they were Mickey Mouse. That the vast majority of smokers were getting hooked before they were adults, and many felt it was unethical to be exposing kids to something as addictive as nicotine when they're that young, impressionable, and uninformed. And this is why you'll never see cigarettes advertised on TV or billboards anymore because courts and legislatures barred them from advertising anywhere kids might see. If it wasn't for the kids, Joe the Camel would probably still be a pretty popular guy. Now, I'm not trying to say that loot boxes are as unhealthy as cigarettes. Obviously, they're not. But like cigarettes, 
They are deliberately designed to exploit you neurologically. You know, back in the 30s, this renowned psychologist, B.F. Skinner, he put some pigeons in a box and learned some crazy shit. He called it an operative conditioning chamber. It had a lever that released a tasty little pigeon treat anytime the bird pushed the lever. But then he messed with how often the lever actually produces a treat. And what he observed was that the bird pushed the lever much more often when there was only a chance that it was going to release a treat. Whereas when every lever push guaranteed a treat, the bird wouldn't bother pushing the lever very often at all. They recreated this with rats, and Skinner argued this phenomenon was just as applicable to humans. It's essentially the underlying psychology of slot machines and games of chance. We are neurologically hardwired to pull the lever much more often when there's only a chance we'll get a reward. Psychologists theorized, this is because back when we had to hunt and gather for survival, that if we knew every tree we searched was guaranteed to have food in it, well then we'd feel content to, you know, stop searching. Because we're confident our next meal is easily attainable. But when only some of the trees had food in them, well then our brains would demand we search trees incessantly to make sure we get that next meal. So as usual, an important survival mechanism has been turned into an exercise of masochism. This is the manipulative neurological mechanism that casinos try to exploit. Instead of climbing a tree, you're pulling a lever. Instead of food, it's money. Now most people can stop themselves because it costs money, but with other shit that's free, it's much harder. Facebook and Twitter use this strategy. We know that every time you get likes and comments, it fills your brain with positive chemicals, so every time you pull up your phone, it's kind of like pulling the lever on a slot machine, you know? Ooh, what did I get this time? People are pulling that lever 2,600 times a day on average. They own us like Skinner owned his fucking pigeons. Remember back when Call of Duty would give you reward and unlocks for reaching a certain level or completing a certain task? Those were the days. But then, starting with Advanced Warfare, they switched to a new system where you would randomly get a supply drop at the end of a match. So you gotta keep playing as many matches as you can because you don't know when that next supply drop will come. Now, I don't think it translated very well to games because they've made some modifications since then, but you can see this gradual desire to implement these kinds of random casino-like mechanisms into the rewards and loot of video games. Another important point here is both games and casinos like to use fake currency. All right, I'm going to directly quote an article I read on theconversation.com, link in the description. Studies have shown that by using fake currency, such as poker chips, cards, or gems, companies can create a disassociation effect in the buyer who does not realize how much real money they are spending. So instead of poker chips, it's supply points, or COD points, or Destiny Silver, whatever. There's never been any point to having these fake currencies in the game. They could just list the cost in real dollar value, but they make fake money to blunt your senses when you look at the price tag. Another thing we've observed in people is that they're more likely to take risks when they're exposed to flashing lights and music, and unsurprisingly, every loot crate opening in every game ever is this extravagant affair of pretty colors flashing and music and satisfying opening sounds. So they're just emulating casinos in every way they can to get kids hooked on loot boxes so they can take advantage of them by essentially price gouging them because that is what's happening. They could sell all these in-game items individually at set prices and there'd be no difference except they wouldn't make as much money selling you that special skin you want for five bucks when they can make you pay for three $5 dice rolls instead. It's just artificially inflating the price of everything. At least Pokemon let you trade your cards, which is probably why it didn't piss people off as bad. Now the ESRB decided paid RNG isn't the same thing as gambling because the industry gets off on a clever technicality, which is that it always gives you something. Even if it's all duplicates of stuff you already have, even if it's a bunch of random common level stuff you don't want that you'll never touch, even though we know that getting those kinds of results can be just as disappointing as getting nothing from the slot machine. And frankly, it's not even that different an outcome in a tangible sense either. Take it from someone who's done both. But on a neurological level, it's not that different, all right? That's the point we need to understand here. Just because it doesn't fit the legal definition doesn't mean it isn't affecting the brain the same way. And that's what's so scary about this. The American Psychiatric Association has classified compulsive gambling in the addictions chapter, you know, right alongside alcohol and cigarettes and drugs. They wrote, and I quote, the APA based its decision on numerous recent studies in psychology, neuroscience, and genetics demonstrating that gambling and drug addiction are far more similar than previously realized, end quote. Games of chance where you spend real money and you're watching the shit open up with bated breath, hoping for big prizes. This shit gets your brain off. There is a pleasure in it, even if it's not an actual casino. Scientists have observed this reaction in people just checking their social media, for God's sakes. You, you think it can't happen rolling for virtual items? And I think many of us can trivialize it because it's just dumb virtual items, right? Just stupid kid stuff. But don't underestimate how seriously kids can take this shit. Kids who don't have much else to care about in their youth. Kids who haven't developed proper perspective on the world and what actually matters yet. I remember vividly being brought to tears when I got hacked in RuneScape and lost all my stuff at age 9. I remember when my cousin Mark snuck on my account and bet my ring of wealth in a duel and lost it and how devastated I was. I remember stealing Yu-Gi-Oh cards and getting caught and crippling a friendship over it. I remember how deeply I cherished that holographic Charizard and I never even figured out how to battle with Pokemon cards. I mean that shit was truly the epitome of pointless. 
And yet, I cared so much. And my emotional attachment and the effect those stupid toys had on me, even the virtual ones, was significant back then. These silly, trivial things could elicit incredibly powerful reactions. They were no more trivial than the crap being shoveled at kids virtually today. Don't underestimate how seriously kids will take this stuff. Don't underestimate how powerful an effect it can have on their psychology. You remember, think back to your fucking youth. You'll remember some dumb shit you cared about. I remember crying because I lost at Monopoly once. I remember the devastation I felt when somebody got Boardwalk before I did. And that shit only had value for like two hours while the game was going on and then it resets. I mean, holy smokes. You know why loot box opening videos became so popular? Because videos let you simulate an experience, right? So you watch porn to simulate sex? Well, you watch those fucking opening videos to simulate the pleasure of opening boxes yourself when you finally run out of dough because mom is getting a bit suspicious that you've dropped a hundred bucks on a game she already bought for 60 and somehow you still haven't got what you wanted. That shit was gambling porn. We used to watch high scoring gameplay videos because it simulated some of the excitement of being good at the game. Now we watch loot box opening videos because we want to simulate opening the boxes because what people are failing to realize is that for a lot of people that has become a bigger more important part of the game than actually fucking playing it because they're playing that game a chance that we know gets their brain a high regular gameplay can't compete with depending on the kind of person you are and it's terrifying because one of the reasons the american psychiatric association decided gambling should be classified the same way as drug use was that it gets you addicted the same way. The Scientific American article summarized it nicely, saying, and I quote, Continuous use of such drugs robs them of their power to induce euphoria. Addictive substances keep the brain so awash in dopamine that it adapts by producing less and becoming less responsive to its effects. As a consequence, addicts build up a tolerance to a drug, needing larger and larger amounts to get high. More simply put, the more you do, the more you have to do, the harder it is to stop. They went on to say, and I quote again, Just as substance addicts require increasingly strong hits to get high, compulsive gamblers pursue ever riskier ventures. Likewise, both drug addicts and problem gamblers endure symptoms of withdrawal when separated from the chemical or thrill they desire, and a few studies suggest that some people are especially vulnerable to both drug addiction and compulsive gambling because their reward circuitry is inherently underactive, which may partially explain why they see big thrills in the first place. Alright? It's a drug. It's not ingesting foreign chemicals into yourself, but the brain reacts to the activity as if it were a drug and you get hooked and when you get hooked you need more and more and more you spend five bucks on some loot boxes oh wow that was great but now next time you got to spend ten because it got to up the ante you ever look at the list of options on the shit you buy and you see the hundred dollar thing and you're like who's spending a hundred dollars on these fucking boxes the kids who started at five bro the kids who started at the five dollar boxes then they went to ten then twenty five by time we're you know twenty years from now they're gonna have them at fucking two thousand bucks 500 million bucks, it's gonna be ridiculous. So to summarize, you know, EA and Activision and whoever else using the psychology of addiction to scam kids. Again, it is a scam. None of the loot has to be randomized. They could let you pick and choose what you want at set prices, but they make it random so that, you know, instead of global kids having to pay five bucks for a legendary skin they want, they spend 50 bucks on opening 10 boxes and they still don't fucking get it. I don't think most parents would be cool with that if they understood what's happening. On top of that, we're conditioning a generation of kids' brains to get hooked on this kind of crap, and they're already getting this unhealthy whammy of it from social media. Don't think parents would be cool with that if they understood the implications for their kids' mental health. And lastly, in both Europe and the US, we know that about 3% of the population are born with the inherently underactive reward circuitry in their brain that we were just talking about. People who are genetically predisposed to having a gambling problem. It's a small percentage, but still millions of people. These practices are setting those kinds of people up to have their lives ruined. Because as that article discussed, you engage in these games of chance, the brain gets desensitized, you have to take bigger risks, put more money on the line. This is the gateway drug to a real gambling problem. And gambling addiction can ruin people's lives just as thoroughly as drugs or alcohol, if not more so. You know, if you're a kid who is genetically predisposed to this crap, spending your whole childhood growing up playing these loot crates, watching those stupid loot crate opening videos from notorious child scammers like T. Martin, by the time you're 21, you are going to be champing at the bit to do some real gambling. Your brain is going to be so conditioned for this shit, you won't be able to help yourself. I don't think those kids' parents would be okay with it if they understood what's silently happening to their kids' brains every day. In the long run, these practices are going to ruin people's lives. I'm not being overdramatic. I'm not being funny. This is sick. So fine, ESRB, you don't want to call it gambling, you fucking pussies. Call it whatever you want. But the proper thing to do would be to require a mature rating for games that include it. And under the little M where it lists the reasons for the rating, you tell them, simulated gambling, I don't know, neurological mental health fucking hazards, whatever you want to call it. 
This shouldn't be available in T-rated games deliberately targeted towards small children like Star Wars. But they'll never do it because they're greedy cowards. So yeah, legislators need to step up and we ought to support them because they're going to need it. Conservative media already coming out in defense of this stuff. When push comes to shove, I can already tell you which party will say blocking children's access to online gambling mechanisms is a burdensome regulation that hurts EA's contributions to America. It's the same shit they said when we wanted to take cigarette advertising off the airwaves, but we did it anyway. And you know what? Freedom didn't end. We just saved a whole bunch of people's lives. If we're gonna let corporations fuck with our kids' brains, we can't be surprised when those kids grow up fucked up. The For the Win query of the day is, out of all the different paid RNG loot systems we've seen across games, which one did you feel was the most unethical and why? Thanks for watching. This is Batman signing out.